Okay, we are going to use, um, I think we're gonna use actually another 19 gauge down on the jawline. Like a little bit more robust down on the jawline. Okay, so we're gonna come from back in here where your port site was. And we're gonna follow this jawline. Straight down. And I push tissue over it. And there we go. You can see that's starting to form that. I'm gonna pull a little bit more right into this area. So I do like to place two at least into every port site because I like to tie it off. In the beginning, I would not recommend you learn to tie. It is one thing that you definitely want. And you can see I'm going through some fibrous tissue, masseteric ligament. So you just wanna slowly guide it. Be a little bit more gentle and finesse that you don't pop through and pop all the way through. I've seen it where people will get stuck and they push super hard and all of a sudden the thread's over here because they push too hard. So there is a little bit of a, it's like a gas pedal. You want to be able to push a little bit on the gas, but control how far you're, how hard you're pushing down on the gas pedal so that you don't overshoot it. So you can kind of see that's looking really pretty. I'm going to take the last one, I'm gonna take our thicker 18 gauge and I really wanna grab onto some nice tissue down in here for this area, the submental area. This is a harder area to grab onto tissue because it, it has a little bit more give. So you just have to slowly work your way through the tissue, okay? So you can kind of see where I'm at and I kind of need to make sure that I'm heading in the right direction so I don't want to head into the actual bone of the jaw, which is right here. I want it to be parallel. So, right here now. So I'm gonna hold on to it, and then I'm gonna twist it, and as I'm coming out, my, my fingers are kind of molding over the tissue a little bit more so. And you can pull it and do give it a little tug, but the great part is they're already laying down, so the tissue should already be wrapping over the actual thread itself. Alrighty. Last one on this side. I'm gonna go down to more of the middle range where people get that turkey neck. I'm gonna grab onto the tissue right here. Let's turn. You can kind of see what nice pull we're getting through this whole area. So now that we've placed all eight threads, what I like to do is now just mold a little bit, make sure that everything is in the right place. So I'll take a little bit, you can use a little bit of Aquaphor, you can use whatever you have out there. I'll just use the Puricin that I cleaned the face off of and just kind of smooth it out. Just be careful, your gauze can get caught on the the barbs that are over here. Okay. Beautiful. So now I'm gonna actually start to tie it off. In the beginning, the best thing, best advice I can say for you is just get used to doing it. Um, and just, if you want to, you can twist it a little bit and then cut it off. Um, but we'll see where you where you want to cut it is making sure that you do pull back on tissue and cut it in through this area. Because if you don't cut it with enough tissue that the, the tip ends up into the subcutaneous tissue, your patient will complain of the thread poking through um, and hitting the hypodermis and they can actually have a very kind of irritated poking, poking point into the area and they'll complain about right at that site that it feels like it's burning and it's like something constantly poking them in that area. So when you do do it, make sure that you do pull back on the, on the thread a little bit, give yourself a little space into this area. I pull back on the tissue a little bit just to give myself some space so it pops into the hypodermis. But 
that's what I typically would recommend you do is not tie it off until you are advanced. And as we get advanced, you can see I do tie it off and I pull a little bit tight. And then if I feel as though it kind of um, puckers them just a little bit, I will hold back and I will kind of unleash and unravel. And you can kind of see that the, the actual knot popped underneath. So this is why when you're creating your port site, you do want to create a larger-ish port site for yourself because you want that actual uh, thread to actually pop underneath. And you can kind of see it's all hidden underneath. You can't feel it. There's no thread that you can see. Now make sure that you don't see any threads that come out of this port site. If you do see threads, take a, P, uh, a forceps or ply or whatever you have, grab the thread, pull it a little bit tighter and snip it more so. Because if you see it, that means you're creating a, a hole. Uh, uh, that, that means the hole is being kept open and the incidence of potential bacteria or infection is going to be higher and there's going to be greater risk. So make sure that your thread is completely, completely underneath the skin. Okay. And here we go. We're going to tie this one off a little bit. Tying is a little bit of a trick. You don't want to pull too much and you want to make sure that before you pull it all that you have no hair caught in there. If you get hair caught into that area, you will potentially create a site of infection because the hair is uh, continuing to keep that hole open. All right, so we place that thread in there. And you can kind of see when I place that, there's a little bit of puckering that I personally don't like. So I'm just gonna push on the thread a little bit and you can kind of see it relaxes and it hold, releases the hold of that a little bit stronger. Same thing down in here with our 19 gauge. I definitely pull this one slightly a little bit tighter. Kind of pop that in place. Smooth everything out a little bit more. Beautiful. And then our last one, which is the more robust one, I want to try to do it on her cementum area. You can kind of see how this pulls really, really nicely into the area. All right. And we just pop it back underneath. This is why you want your little bit wet gauze so you can actually pop it underneath. And we're done with one side. If you do need to add volume, you can add volume. Um, make sure that you understand that this is, this is the tightest that the patient's gonna kind of feel for the next couple of days. They definitely will feel irritation, sensitivity on their face for about a week or two weeks. So if they wanna take some Tylenol, Motrin, you can. Uh, for your patients who are super, super, super bougie, you can add a little bit of a Kenna Long Shot or a little bit of Medro Dose Pack. If you preemptively also want to put them on antibiotics, you're able to put them on antibiotics as well preemptively. But ultimately for me, most of my patients just go home. I tell them a little bit of warm compress or ice for today, warm compresses in the next day or two days. Um, if they really do have irritation, come on back. I typically will evaluate my patient two to two to four weeks later. Make sure as always with any of these threads and, the, and like fillers, no dental work for two weeks before or afterwards. We actually did have a patient who didn't listen to us and actually the thread kind of got inflamed and irritated and actually looked like it was brewing a little bit of an infection. And so you want to make sure that there's no dental work because that will seed bacteria into your bloodstream and potentially catch on to a thread that's going to be there for six to nine months. So don't, don't tell your patients to, yeah, it's fine getting dental work. No, you want to at least wait two weeks before and after before a filler or a thread is placed. Okay. So we can kind of see how she's pulled up a little bit more volume. She is a little volume depleted, as I said. And so this is where I would probably add a little bit of volume. You could take a, we'll probably play around with um, superficial threads and kind of just build her some volume in here. She has definitely a lack of volume 
into this area just to round it out just a little bit. But you can see her nasolabial, her jowl area, and her, her chin area actually looks so much better. You can see when she looks how it's not hanging down because she has much more tissue and you can see how much thickness she has. Another thing you can do is as a combination therapy is after you've done the lifting is you can now add superficial threads to actually start to stimulate a little bit of volumization and some quality thickness to the skin. People don't realize, but when you age, it's not only volume that you're losing, the fat is also dropping down, but then also your skin is actually getting a little unhealthier from losing collagen and elastin in the skin. So by placing the threads deeper, you're lifting, then you can come back and we'll show you videos on how to actually place around with some of the superficial threads to actually create more volume and some more collagen in the actual skin itself to give the skin more health.